Alright, hey guys, these are the best OBS settings for recording. This gives you the best quality and versatility. Under settings, output, recording, and setting your output mode to advanced. I'm using a recording format of hybrid MP4. It came out a few months ago. Initially, we would use MKV, then select automatically remarks to MP4. This will convert our MKV files in our OBS recordings folder to MP4. So whenever we record, there'll be a MKV file and an MP4 file of the same recording. However, now with hybrid MP4, you do not need to use MKV. The reason we use MKV is because if our computer crashes, MKV as a container does not delete the entire file, but manages to pause the recording and just stops it at where your computer just crashed. This way, this way your recording will not be lost if OBS or your computer crashes. If you're using MP4 and your computer crashes, the entire recording, let's say an hour of recording before your computer crashes, will be lost. That's why we used MKV. Hybrid MP4 has the same property, where if your computer crashes, this hybrid MP4 file will not be lost. I'm using hybrid MP4 now instead of MKV, then remarking to MP4, as I do not need to delete the MKV files every time that I finish recording. Usually I would delete the MKV files as I already have the MP4 variant of the same recording. But now, using hybrid MP4, I do not need to remove the MKV files as only an MP4 file will be saved to my OBS recordings folder. For my video encoder, I'm using the NVIDIA NVENC HEVC. NVIDIA NVENC HEVC is better than NVIDIA NVENC H264. However, NVIDIA NVENC AV1 is also available. However, Adobe Premiere Pro does not support AV1. Thus, I'm sticking to the old NVIDIA NVENC HEVC. NVIDIA NVENC HEVC gives pretty good bitrate efficiency and also quality, and also different uh, options for encoder settings. If you choose different video encoders, you may get different encoder settings options. For the audio encoder, I'm using FFmpeg PCM 32-bit float. This is the only 32-bit float option. What 32-bit float basically does is allows you to recover audio that has clipped in the recording. You can just simply go to your editing software like DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro. You can reduce the overall volume of the audio to recover the clip portions. It's basically magic. Hybrid MP4 supports 32-bit float. I'm using audio track 3, 4, and 5 for my mic, music, and system all separated. Audio track 3 is system. Audio track 4 is music and audio track 5 is a microphone. These are not selected. So that each audio track only has one output, allowing me to have more granular control when I'm editing in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. I do not use a rescale output, but use lens source or bilinear if you want to use the rescale output option. Under encoder settings, for the highest quality, I use variable bitrate with target quality and a target quality of 16. Technically, a target quality of 14 will work too. A target quality of 14 is basically lossless, but I set it to 16 because it's also kind of visually lossless for me. So I just set it to 16 in order to balance the file size and the quality. However, if you really want the maximum quality, you can set it to 14 or even lower than that. 20 is basically a good middle ground to balance file sizes, but for really really good quality recordings, use a target quality of 14. I have a maximum bit rate of 80 megabytes per second. This is a really high maximum bit rate, as this high quality requires a high bit rate. I found out that for my recording scenario, this maximum bit rate of 80,000 kilobytes per second is enough for this quality target of 16. For example, if I'm playing a game of Kronker and there's a lot of things happening on screen, they would have to use this quality target of 16 to target a very high quality with very little blotchiness on the screen, which requires a very high maximum bitrate. That's why I select a maximum bitrate of 80,000 kilobytes per second or 80 megabytes per second so that there's enough headroom such that they can use this extra bitrate to encode very complex scenes. 
I use a keyframe interval of 2, as this is the most recommended value to use for the keyframe interval setting. It is the most compatible with recording and streaming, so just use a keyframe interval of 2. YouTube, Twitch, all support the keyframe interval of 2 only. For preset, I've set my preset to P7. This gives basically uh, X264 slow quality. This is the highest quality possible that you can record in, in OBS, apart from the bitrate settings. However, P6 and P7 can be very slow to encode, and only use this setting if you have a good GPU. I have a RTX 5090 with a split encode of a 3-way split, that's why I'm able to use the preset of P7. For the multi-pass mode, there's a negligible difference between 2 passes quarter resolution and 2 passes full resolution. 2 passes quarter resolution uses less CPU power, so just stick to that for the best quality. However, some people argue that single pass is the better mode, so you can also experiment with that, and that gives you better stability and quality at the same time. For profile, I just use main. I have no idea what main 10 does. There's very little documentation on that too. Look ahead is a recommended option to turn on. It basically increases the bitrate efficiencies. It increases visual quality by determining a better bitrate distribution through the analysis of future frames. This increases the GPU utilization and latency. However, you can still use this setting if you don't have an extremely good GPU. It works fine on my 2070 Super and it would probably work fine on like a 1080 Ti on a 1070 Ti. For adaptive quantization, it's recommended to turn on for streaming, but not for recording at high bit rates. Adaptive quantization basically optimizes the bit rate efficiencies too. For B frames, B frames are frames that take information from the frame before it and the frame after it to generate frames because not every frame is encoded in video compression due to a lack of sufficient bit rate. The recommended value to set B frames to is 2. For B frames as reference, I need to explain what reference frames are first. Refer reference frames are frames constructed to base future frames off of. This requires more bit rate to generate these reference frames. However, by using your B frames as reference frames, this saves bit rate as reference frames do not need to be generated from scratch. Set to each or middle for a bit of bit rate efficiency improvements, but there's no real quality difference between the two. Middle B frame only is recommended. For split encode, if you have a RTX 5090, you can use a 3-way split. Basically, the RTX 5090 has 3 NVENC encoders, which is this one, allowing you to use all 3 of them at the same time, balancing the workload between all 3. For the 2-way split, the RTX 5080, I think the RTX 5070 and RTX 4090 and 4080 and some 4070 versions have a two-way split. You can use this setting to improve the speed of your encoding so that you can use presets like P6 and P7. It is also useful for recording in like 8K60 or 4K120. It's not recommended to use this split encode setting if you're multi-streaming as taking the top frame and bottom frame encoding them separately on different NVENC chips, then joining them together in multi-streaming and multiple encodes can be very difficult and can result in a disjunction of the top frame and bottom frame, creating like a split in the middle. Under advanced settings and color format, you can set your color format to I444. This gives you a ratio of 4 is to 4 is to 4. However, this color space is not well supported by editing softwares and gives you bigger file sizes. I do not use i444 and I stick to the normal NV12 as this is the most supported option. However, i444 is really good if you're constantly cropping in or zooming in into your recordings as i444 gives you a better pixel layout. Uh, I can show you what the different color spaces mean. This is basically what the different chroma subsampling settings mean. For a normal default chroma subsampling setting of 420, there's basically two colors. 422 is this, and 444 is this. So if you zoom in all the way, this will be overall sharper and clearer. Alright, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, you can join my Discord server and ask them there. 
or even just drop a comment below. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.